One man transformed the aviation industry. One idea transformed into reality. One aircraft transformed the world. With two decks capable of carrying 500 passengers and wings the length of a city block, it was double the size of any airliner before. The Boeing 747. Recognizable as the jumbo jet, one man made this dream possible. He proved to the world what could be done with perseverance. This man was none other than Joe Sutter, the man who changed the aviation industry forever. The era of intercontinental jet travel began in the early 1960s when there was a need for something bigger and better. The Boeing company, based in Everett, Washington, had introduced the Boeing 707, which turned out to be quite popular amongst many airlines. Initially, the Boeing 707 was used on transatlantic routes, but soon was joined by the DC-8, which the Douglas company made. The DC-8 looks similar to the 707. However, it could carry more passengers and go farther. Soon after, passenger numbers began to soar by up to 12% per year. The Douglas Company introduced a stretched version of the DC-8, called the DC-9, to cope with the demand. The 707, however, couldn't be stretched due to its design. The Boeing Company began losing money and was desperately looking for a radical solution. Joseph F. Sutter was appointed to build an aircraft that could compete with the DC-9. Born on March 21, 1921, he always had a love for aviation. As a boy, he would look up to see the new planes soar high up in the sky. Over the summer, he worked at Boeing as an aircraft mechanic while studying in school for an aeronautical degree. After he graduated, he began working for Boeing as an aerodynamics specialist. He earned a reputation as a troubleshooter, which earned him enough fame for the Boeing company to appoint him as the 747 project manager. After several weeks in the wind tunnel testing room, he came up with his final product, an aircraft with a partial upper deck and four engines that could fly a quarter of the way around the world and carry double the number of passengers as the 707 and DC-8 combined. He called this aircraft the 747. Back at the first commercial transport that Boeing designed, it was the 247. And why it was called the 247? <clears throat> I'm guessing that there is some administrative reason within Boeing that probably in the early 30s they had designated that design as design number 247. And they must have, there probably was something before or something after that. But it must have started with that, and so then they just continued. Boeing gave the go-ahead to Mr. Sutter's plans after realizing that this was its only hope of recovering from their financial deficit. In terms of where the money was coming from, Boeing basically gambled the whole company, hoping that the success of the 747 would save them from their financial crisis. Due to the size restraints of the existing factory, Mr. Sutter decided to clear the nearby forest to erect an entirely new building. Due to time constraints of 29 months by Boeing, Joe Sutter decided to begin constructing the 747 while the factory was still being built. Meanwhile, Boeing's workers disbelieved the company. They wondered why the company was wasting so much money on Mr. Sutter's ideas and designs when it was already clear that no airline would buy the aircraft. Despite the arguments, Mr. Sutter began showcasing the 747's design plans to its customers. Juan T. Tripp, president of Pan American Airways, liked the 747's design and structure and agreed to purchase 25 jumbos at a list price of nearly half a billion dollars. Other airlines also made purchase agreements, with Iran Air, All Nippon Air, and Japan Air ordering a total of 36 jumbos. The workers were astonished at how airlines had faith in the 747 revolutionizing jet travel. Ignoring the criticisms, Joe Sutter continued building the aircraft. By this point, he was in a lot of pressure from the customers, 
who are waiting for the progress of the 747. He soon discovered that the 747's wing was unable to cope with the outside environment. After spending many months, he redesigned the structure by attaching a short rod at the far tip of the wing, which provided a radical solution to that problem. Now, he had to figure out how to get engines powerful enough to get the 747 to fly. He appointed Pratt & Whitney Incorporated to make the engines. Many of Sutter's team associates did not know that Mr. Sutter's prototype was being built. However, a moment of realization would be achieved when the first 747 would be unveiled to the public. Let us move forward to see it in service on the airlines. On September 30, 1968, the first 747, registered as N7470 with the code RA001, was rolled onto the tarmac while hundreds of people stood waiting to see Joe Sutter's creation. As the scale of this aircraft became clear, the term Jumbo Jet began describing the 747. Okay, now the cadence, and don't break it yet. The cadence is going to be one, two, three. Got it? Okay, wait, wait. Wait. All right. We'll do it again. One, two, three. With all this great pomp and splendor also came the sole purpose of this particular aircraft. N7470 would be used to test the plane's capabilities in extreme conditions to find any design flaws. One phase of testing the aircraft was to bend the wing to see how many degrees of deflection the wing could, could go through or stand until the force on it caused it to break. The 747 passed all its tests with flying colors. On February 9, 1969, crowds of people gathered at Payne Field in Everett to witness the flight of the largest transport plane in the world. On board were pilot Jack Waddle, co-pilot Brian Weigel, and flight engineer Jess Wallach. At around noon, Waddle eased the throttles forward. The superjet accelerated down the runway, its nose lifting. Halfway down the field, the giant plane took flight at a speed of 164 miles per hour. Many people stood amazed at how this big metal bird could even fly. Nevertheless, its successful takeoff marked success for the future. Within the first decade, more than 20 airlines had the 747 in their fleet. The 747 was the prestige aircraft that every airline had to have. With its spacious cabin, the 747 prompted new levels of luxury for passengers. If Joe Sutter had not invented the 747, the world would have never experienced the convenience and magnificence of air travel. Because of his accomplishments, the Boeing company was saved from a financial meltdown. What turned out to be the greatest risk turned out to be the greatest feat for Boeing. And the flying public, this wouldn't have been possible if it weren't for Joe Sutter. Today, the 747 with its distinct hump carries hundreds of passengers to many destinations worldwide and is recognized as the queen of the skies. Mournfully, Joe Sutter, the father of the 747, passed away on August 30th, 2016 at the age of 95. But the 747 story lives on with the 747-8i having been released recently. The new 747 boasts a higher capacity and more fuel efficiency. The 747's success was a bit of a surprise. The big money maker was supposed to be the Boeing uh, 2707 Mach 2 SST. The SST never happened, but because Boeing had the 747, when it came out and entered service, it literally revolutionized air travel with its much lower operating costs. Despite opposition, Joe Sutter made a mark in history by building an aircraft never seen before. His footsteps have paved the path for the future, with the 747 destined to remain soaring high up in the sky. None of this would have been possible if it weren't for Joe Sutter, the man who changed the aviation industry forever.